Hello and welcome to Stream Tabulous. So in the last video, we were taking a look at Ackley's AI Diffusion 1.15. And on the older GTX, and I'm running the GTX 1070, we had the error come up. So I reached out and I got a response back for a, a workaround that may work. And I've tried it and it's worked. So we'll go over and we'll take a look at how to do that so you can get your creator with the AI diffusion working properly. So we'll head to the intro and then we'll take a look at that. So we're just over here at um, Ackley's GitHub and we have the AI Diffusion here. So the easiest way to get a hold of him, and I didn't realize this, is if you're actually having an issue, is to click on Issues up here, and then it'll actually open up and you can log an issue that you're having, and he will respond to that, um, or he may respond to that, or someone else will respond to that, and help you work out your issues. So all we need to do to fix this issue is go into our Krita folder. So that's the one in your app data roaming Krita. So when you go into your app data roaming Krita, uh, which I've talked about in other videos, you may need to uh, go to unhide to unhide hidden folders because the app data is normally hidden. Uh, but once you are in your app data roaming Krita folder, you just want to come up here to AI Diffusion. It used to be in the PY Krita, then AI Diffusion, and then usually it'd be in Server and then Confi UI. Not in there, because with the uh, 1.15 update, it's been made so any future updates that update it, you don't lose your settings. So it's been moved into this folder here, AI Diffusion up the top. If you open that up, I've already backed it up, so I right click it and you can just like uh, send to zip file. That way, if you damage it, you um, won't, you can just restore it by uh, putting the other one back. So I recommend doing that. So all we want to do is we want to come into this JSON folder. So we want to right click that, open with notepad, or you can just go open and it may present you with uh, something to actually open that up with. If it doesn't, then you can just select open with um, and just choose like more options at the bottom here. Choose another app, choose notepad, and then away you go. So once that's open, it will look like this. So that's the uh, directory that your folder will be in, except for you'll have whatever your username is there. So all we're going to do there is we're going to add an argument line. And I'm just going to show you where to put that. So we want to come down here. These load up when uh, the um, Comfy UI server loads up. So you want to come across to these two brackets and just put in dash dash force dash FP32. There's also 16. Now, on my old card, I am going to run FP16 because I've tested it with 32. Now, the issue with 32 is it will force to use all the memory of your graphics card. And on an older graphics card, it takes a lot longer to render with the slower running uh, DDR, be it 3, DDR4, uh, so forth. So FP16 will only use half the amount. So I have an eight gig card and it's going to only use four gig. Uh, that might sound like a bad thing, uh, but because it's only using less, it's actually going to uh, render faster. Now, what I've found with putting this argument in, I'll let you know, is FP32 took three minutes to render. FP16 is taking around about a minute to render so my render times are taking longer than they were before putting this in so hopefully we'll see other fixes and then from there all you have to do is save it and i already have it in there so we'll just save that close it off and then we can run 
Krita. So here's Krita here, and we have it up, and you'll see what I mean. We no longer have to put the dot in. So I've already expanded my edges. So I've just cropped it, made it larger. Okay. I've come through, I've used the selection rectangle box here to select this. Uh, in a future video, I will show you why my interface looks different and how you can add these dockers. I primarily have it so I can very quickly see more of this window up here and more of the layers. And then when I'm painting or uh, using the pen now um, from Cosmic, I can just come through, I can go through and do it there. So it's already selected. It already says to expand the image. Keep in mind these workflows are larger because it's reading the whole image. So these do take longer anyway. Um, rendering just a straight prompt is still faster than doing something like expand anyway. So we'll let that run. And I've already given it a couple of tests here, but we'll see that um, there's no magic dot. Uh, it's not kicking out the error anymore and it is working perfectly fine. So we'll let this finish and we'll take a look at the result. And keep in mind, this is a old GTX 1070. And if I have a look at the image size here, I'm actually running it at a rather large image. So it's 1500 by 1158. So usually I would work on 628 by 628, which would cut those uh, rendering times in half. So this has got a very good speed for uh, what it's actually doing right now. And we can see if we come through and we take a look at the results, we're getting fantastic results. They're blending in exceptionally well. See that there? We're getting good results across the board. This one is just finishing up. It's actually finished up. There's our result there. Okay. So keep in mind, I'm going through the graphics card to record OBS. And even though I've now set uh, Creator up to only use half the 8 gig of RAM, so it's only using 4 gig, theoretically, you would think that there is 4 gig free for OBS to use and they wouldn't conflict together. But when they're actually going through the lanes, like traffic on a road, there's only so many lanes you can drive through and both OBS and Creta want to drive through those lanes at the same time they can't so it is slowing down the renders anyway to get fast renders uh, you really don't want anything open at all you just want the program open uh, don't have explorer open in the background close off as much as you can uh, one of the other things you want to do is come through to your settings so the cog you want to make sure that you're on your NVIDIA there, if it if you've got a NVIDIA graphics card. Otherwise, direct uh, ML, which is for AMD, and CPU for CPU. And if you come down to performances here, you want to turn this up. Though this is where it's going to store, um, I believe it's generated images, so it says that there. It'd be nice to see it store the models. Um, the models are stored generally in the graphics card and then flushed out and replaced, which is why when you do a first render, it may be paused for a while until it loads that model up. And the bigger the model, the longer it takes to load up. They are six gig models, so keep that in mind. That takes up a lot of your memory. So put that up and put that up and put this on low. Even if you're running something like a 4060 Ti, if you put it on lower and it uses lower RAM, you'll actually find your renders are faster. And gen generally, you're not going to see too much of a difference in the output image. Uh, I will try to do a video to talk more about that uh, in the future. And of course, I've discussed it in other videos. There are also the, um, the steps. So you come down here, the more steps you've got, the longer it's going to take. And of course, samplers also make a difference and so forth. So we can see that's rendered perfectly fine there. So we can drop that off. We can apply that one if we want to. And we can come up and we can click on our prompt. Copy a prompt. And we can come down, hide that. I'll just hide that. Okay, so we've got our face here. So now if we want to, we can add this layer so it's buried behind my head and we've talked about that before. Just right here, we can click on that. We can change it to face, just go up. 
Now it's going to use this face here to render an image, and we had an error doing that before. I haven't tried this yet, so I'm not too sure how long this will actually take to run. I'm going to use my stopwatch to uh, time that. And um, it won't error this time. It will just go through and do its bit and um, render an image with a face on it. To save you the boredom, we'll let it jump forward and I'll let you know how long it took to actually do it. Now keep in mind, there is a lot more work in these workflows when you're telling it. Every single time you add one of these uh, workflows here, these control layers, they take longer to actually um, go through and do the process. So that adds to the render time. It's not just a straight prompt and done. And we're not also just working in a small area. Four minutes. I'm finished. Four minutes. So unfortunately that uh, FP32 and FP16, I am finding really, really slow down the Comfy AI backend. We're on five minutes now and the render with this face has not finished. So it's probably a feature I'm not going to use that much of. It's probably getting to that point that um, the older hardware, uh, some of these features you're probably not going to want to use uh, for this exact reason of render time. Because uh, uh, it's almost six minutes now. I don't think anyone wants to sit there that long. And then if it's a bad render, it's going to be like, yeah, okay, I don't want to run that. And I did do test this earlier. And yeah, it's not even letting me click it. There we go. So I did this one. It did not take as long as what we are sitting uh, watching now. And I assume that has got to do with running OBS in the background. And uh, anyway, you can see that that face, I mean, generally it did not really stick that much to what the uh, original looked like. If you take a look at that and take a look at that, the extrapolation is not the best. And I found that with this um, face AI, that it doesn't give the uh, best face result, or at least I found that it didn't. And we can see that's the result. It's finally kicked out at six and a half minutes on the nose. So that's a long render. Um, OBS is probably playing a big part in that. It certainly did not take that long to uh, render this one up here. The interesting thing is this and this face do look the same and both of those are based on that face. So whatever it's picking up, it is sticking with. It may be the fact that this image here is squished and it's stretching it out to fit the uh, screen. So there we go. So I hope this video helps you guys out. Uh, so you can add that line in and I will leave um, in the comments below what you're actually putting in um, the approximate directory other than the fact that it's your name for that app data where to find that JSON file so you can add that to it so you can get this working on your uh, older graphics cards these render times did take a lot longer than my testing before actually doing this uh, live recording and so it's pretty dominant that the OBS going through the graphics processor and these new features that are high end are conflicting with my OBS. Your render time should be faster than uh, what you're actually seeing in this video. So I want to point that out, but they are longer render times. Uh, your mileage may vary. Comment below on how you guys go. I would be keen to know what graphics card you're actually running. Um, did you have to put these lines in to fix the errors? Uh, what are your render times? Don't forget, like, subscribe, get the bell on for notifications. I'm hoping this video helped you out and at least helps other people out as well. So share this to your social medias and to whatever little groups you've got and hopefully it helps other people out. If you know other uh, arguments, arguments, whatever the heck it is, 
If you know other little commands that can be put in there to speed up Comfy, let me know in the comments below and I'll play with it and we'll see what it actually does. And we'll see if we can get it working that little bit faster. Because uh, having it work fast is something which I absolutely love. And I think um, you've seen in previous videos that it works flawlessly and it is just these new workflows which are far more taxing on the GPU. So leave a comment below. And I will catch you in the next Stream Tabulous video. Thank you for watching my video and sticking around to the end. If you like my videos, it would really help me out if you could like and subscribe. It helps the YouTube algorithm to push my videos out there to more viewers, which in turn helps me and helps everyone. So thank you for watching my video and hanging around to the end, and I will see you in the next video.